So we have the most advanced rocket engine that's ever been designed. Um, the because I say currently the, the the best rocket engine ever is probably the RD one eighty or RD one seventy. Um, that that the Dora Russian engine basically. Um, and um, and still, it, I think an engine should only count if it's gotten something to orbit. Um, <laughs> Musk is famous for his technological leaps. He pioneered payments online with PayPal, kickstarted the EV market with Tesla, and practically created the only successful private space industry with SpaceX. But you may not have heard of his latest monumental advancement, a brand new rocket engine that will take us to Mars, help us explore the moon, and even dominate the aviation industry. So what makes this engine so unique? Why is it so important? And when will it be in operation? Let's get all the answers to these questions here today in this video. SpaceX aims at an entire life of a thousand flights for the Raptor. In 2019, the price of the engine turned out to be coming near $1 million. SpaceX plans to mass produce as many as 500 Raptor engines consistently within 12 months, each costing less than $250,000. Every Starship booster will use 33 sea stage Raptors at the same time, as every Starship spacecraft will use three sea level Raptors plus three vacuum optimized Raptors. Just days after unveiling SpaceX's radically redesigned Raptor engine, Elon Musk says the system is now powerful enough to support his ambitious Mars plans. In an update following recent test fires of the Raptor engine, the SpaceX boss said it hit 172 metric tons of force, surpassing what's needed for Starship and Super Heavy. Ultimately, however, the huge Super Heavy rocket will require as many as 31 Raptors to carry it to space. Raptor just achieved the power level needed for Starship and Super Heavy, Musk tweeted on Thursday alongside a picture from the test fire. The design requires at least 170 metric tons of force, the engine reached 172 metric tons, and a 257 bar chamber pressure with warm propellant, which means 10% to 20% more with deep cryo. Musk lifted the veil on the latest version of the Raptor engine at the beginning of the week. The engine will one day power the super heavy rocket and Starship on missions to the moon and beyond. The SpaceX CEO shared footage on Twitter from the first test firing of the Raptor rocket engine this weekend and provided an update on the capabilities that will help it reach the moon as fast as possible. It comes just days after Musk's Starship prototype was knocked over by 50 mile per hour winds in Texas and suffered extensive damages. SpaceX has been developing the Raptor engine over the last few years as part of its plan to eventually send tourists to Mars. Back in December, Musk tweeted that he had redesigned the engine the latest images show just how large a single Raptor is, with an engineer standing next to it completely dwarfed by its size. And the super heavy rocket is expected to require as many as 31 of these engines, initially making one 200 metric ton thrust engine common across ship and booster to reach the moon as fast as possible, Musk tweeted alongside the footage from the recent tests. The engine packs a far bigger punch than the Merlin engines behind the company's current Falcon 9 rockets. At the conference, Musk explained that the sea level Raptor engines would produce a thrust of 1,700 kilonewtons with a specific impulse of 330 seconds at sea level, rising to 356 seconds in a vacuum, and an exit diameter of 1.3 meters. The thrust of the vacuum engines will total 1,900 kilonewtons, with a specific impulse of 375 seconds and an exit diameter of 2.4 meters. Musk has big plans for these engines, the first BFR unmanned cargo to Mars. This will be followed by four BFRs, two unmanned and two manned, which will place the first humans on Mars and establish a refueling system to get back home. It's unclear when SpaceX will next reveal updates for the Raptor engine. SpaceX has not announced whether it's attending this year's International Astronautical Congress, scheduled for October 1st through 5th in Bremen, Germany. But Musk's appearance at the past two shows has fans excited for the possibility of another update at the event. The next versions will split to vacuum optimized 380 plus seconds LSP and sea level thrust optimized to 250 tons. 
Starship, previously known as BFR or Big Falcon Rocket, is the crux of Musk's plan to send humans to Mars. The prototype, or Hopper, experienced some major setbacks last month when it was toppled by strong winds in Texas. The entire hollow nose cone broke off, and at the time, Musk said it would take a few weeks to repair. The nose cone fairing was simply welded on top to improve aerodynamics and provide the appearance and aesthetic of a completed rocket. Before the damages, Musk shared images of the progress on the test hopper as engineers worked to bring it to life. As one view shared in a thread on the NASA Spaceflight Forum, a large American flag could be seen plastered on the side of one of the huge metal cylinders. Responding to questions from Twitter users, Musk confirmed it would use stainless steel, like the Atlas rocket family. But he explained it will have a different mixture of alloys and new architecture. Unlike Atlas, Starship is buckling stable on launch pad even when unpressurized, Musk said. I will do a full technical presentation of Starship after the test vehicle we're building in Texas flies, so hopefully March or April, he added. In later responses, Musk said that the first orbital prototype should be ready by June. The big question has been how much of this is drawing board hardware and how much has been built. When SpaceX shipped the Raptor engine to Texas earlier this summer, it marked a significant moment for the company because an engine is the most important part of a rocket and typically takes the longest time to develop and test. If the Raptor engine can undergo full-scale test firings, then SpaceX is beginning to deliver the hardware needed to make the interplanetary flight a reality. Now, it just needs some financial help to bring this vision into reality. When Musk gave an update in September 2019, he predicted that the first orbital flight would occur within six months. But with 2020, SpaceX has yet to try an orbital launch of Starship. His talk at the site that SpaceX calls Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, near Brownsville, mixed in a variety of body remarks while largely rehashing the vision he had described in the past, including his arguments for why humanity needed to expand beyond Earth as a backup plan for the survival of humankind. He also responded to critics who say space is a waste of time and money, noting how little the federal budget is directed to spaceflight and exploration. I'm just suggesting we'd like maybe half a percent or something? Like, that would probably be okay, Musk said, referring to budgeting for space. He also mixed in technical details about improvements the company has made on the next version of the engines used for Starship. So the only remaining issue that we're aware of is melting the chamber, Musk said, describing the intense heat generated by the engine. Just not melting the chamber is very difficult, Musk continued. It's kind of the last remaining challenge, but I think we're very close to solving that. He was hopeful that an environmental review by the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, would soon give SpaceX the go-ahead to try a launch to orbit from Boca Chica. We've gotten sort of a rough indication that there may be an approval in March, Musk said. If that occurred, an orbital launch attempt could occur in a couple of months, or potentially May, he said. But he also conceded that if the FAA decided a more comprehensive environmental review was needed, SpaceX would shift the launches to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and that would cause a delay of six to eight months to modify the launching pad there for the massive Starship. The version of the engine is soon to enter testing, and the factory will be capable of making two to four of these engines per day. As you can see, the production rate is higher than a typical rocket factory, but low compared to an automobile factory, as Elon Musk stated in a tweet. In the factory, it will be the highest output and most advanced rocket engine factory in the world. He believes it will be needed to support a high cadence of super heavy operations, including many flights to Mars related to the build out of the planned Martian city. So that's it for today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this.